In the first year medical class at University of Toronto, there are 259 students, but only one of them identifies as black. In response to this lack of diversity, the university has now launched an initiative to boost this chronically low number. So let's give you some context here. About 8.5% of Toronto's population is black, but only 1% of Ontario's doctors are black. So joining me now, Dr. Lisa Robinson. She is the Chief Diversity Officer at the Faculty of Medicine and also Chika Oriua, who is a first year medical student. Not only just a, the one, as we have said, self-identified black student um, at the first year med class. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Um, so Chika, I want to start with you. So it's 2017 and we think we're so progressive. It's 2017 and yet, as we've said, you are the one of 259 students in the first year med school that is black. So I want to ask you, are you surprised at all by that number? Well, yes, because as you said, it is 2017. And so we would expect to have a medical class that is reflective of the diversity of the populations that we are servicing. Um, but on the other hand, I recently did just graduate from my undergraduate training and I was, only the, I was also the only black student at that cohort level as well, out of around 200 or so health sciences graduates. And so I think that it's, it's really kind of important to kind of have that as a microcosm of the dilemma that we're facing and how this is more of a systemic issue and not necessarily reflective of the general intelligence or the tenacity of black students. Yes, very important point. Do Dr. Robinson, you've got this initiative now to try to, to change this. So tell us about what is happening at the university. Sure. So one of our major goals is to uh, train physicians of the future who reflect our population. So currently that's not happening. Um, and we know that certain students and certain groups are very underrepresented. So in particular, black students, indigenous students, and economically disadvantaged students. So this new initiative is called the Black Student Application Program, or BSAP, and we've modeled it after some of our existing programs, including our Indigenous Student Application Program and our MD-PhD Application Program. So the academic criteria for BSAP applicants are exactly the same as for all other applicants to the medical school, and there are no quotas. But what is different for BSAP applicants is that they will uh, write an additional essay, which will give them the opportunity to tell, them, to tell us something about themselves that might not otherwise be captured in the application. And in addition to that, members of the black community at large, as well as black physicians, uh, black medical students, Students, faculty members will participate in the application file review and the interview process. And for students who are admitted into the program, we will continue to try to develop and foster a sense of community um, and provide additional mentorship opportunities and increased visibility of black physician role models. So our hope is that by implementing BSAP, we'll help to break down some of the barriers that impede black students from applying and really nurture a more welcoming, inclusive environment and culturally safe environment. I want to ask both of you, but I'll I'll start with you, Chico. Why do you think, um, what are some of these challenges that are preventing more black students from either applying at the undergrad level or even going beyond? What are these challenges? So I think that a number, there are a number of reasons as to why there are barriers, but I think it also stems back to the resources and the social capital that is provided to black students. So be it educational, financial, or social, there is that deficit in terms of mentorship and the resources that are, are available to them. And so that really precludes them from being able to have insight into the medical journey and what it's like to become a physician. And also there's that lack of tangibility. So they don't actually see themselves reflected in the medical field. And so it's not necessarily tangible for them. They don't, they don't see it there. So that's really what this initiative is trying to address. Oh, and, and I was going to say, like, why is diversity so important to see in our medical field? Well, again, I mean, as I said, our, our main goal is to try to train a very uh, diverse, culturally competent um, group of physicians who are going to be well equipped to care for our diverse population. But that's only possible if the medical school classes actually reflect the community. And, you know, if you have diverse medical classes, we know that that just changes the environment and it allows uh, students to have um, more active conversations and are, they're more able to, call, to challenge some of the cultural assumptions and stereotypes. And that results in, in uh, you know, much better cultural awareness of all the students in the class. 
There are also studies that show that minority patients tend to seek care from minority physicians. And not only that, they report greater satisfaction of, with that care. And you know, coming back to the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto, part of everything that we do, really, we strive for inno to innovate in everything that we do, and we strive for excellence. And we know that diversity um, is a key driver of innovation, and that diversity really fuels excellence. And what's the end goal here for you, Chika? In terms of what I want to go yes. to in medicine? Yes. Um, well, they kind of say that as a first year medical student, you're undifferentiated in a yes. sense and you're not, you don't exactly know. Um, but I do have an interest in public health as well as women's health. So maybe obstetrics and gynecology, but I have to wait and see what my rotations are like and then we'll take it from there. We can't wait to see where you'll go. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Very eye-opening.